Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me on this week's episode is Dr. Lauren Glazinski, Manager of Veterinary Services for tri Foods, a division of JBS. Dr. Lauren, thank you very much for coming on to the show. Um, why don't you give the audience a quick introduction and tell them a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Dr. Lauren Glazinski. As Clayton said, I'm the manager of veterinarian services for tri Foods based out of Oakville, Iowa. Uh, we were acquired by JBS back in December, so happy to be part of the JBS family now. I am a 2016 graduate of the University of Pennsylvania with some previous experience working for Tyson Foods down in Oklahoma. And an award-winning AASV swine veterinarian, I might add. True. I was the 2022 uh, Young Swine Veterinarian of the Year for AASV. Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and accountable insights, the Lawn Co. is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions to manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. All right, Lauren, we're sitting here in the middle of the summer. Um, We've been pretty blessed so far, at least where you and I live in the Midwest, that we haven't really had a brutal summer, but it looks like next week's going to get pretty hot. Um, certainly at the sow farm, we always worry about, uh, making sure that we're able to have breed target and everybody get concerned, gets concerned about the wean to service interval or wean to estrus interval rising at this point. You want to talk a little bit about, um, ultimately why we deal with that in the summer months and then maybe some tips and tricks for producers and veterinarians who might be battling that. Sure. It's definitely a timely topic given that we're in the heat of summer as we're talking today. Um, reproductive e- efficiency is really critical to any sow farm, and it's the best indicator of a highly productive farm uh, being the nine, non-productive days. So when it comes to non-productive days, one measurement of success is that wean to service interval. Uh, the wean to f- first service interval is defined as the number of days that pass between the weaning of a sow and the first artificial insemination service after her weaning. Um, so ideally, we'd like to meet about 90% of our wean sows in less than seven days. And I think that's a good measure of success. Um, Right now, like we said, we're on the peak of summer in the United States. It's the time of year where we're going to see the greatest lag on wean to first service intervals. Um, And this is primarily due to lactation intake and the decrease in that sow's lactation intake or decrease in her amount of energy that she's consuming uh, rather than some other intrinsic factor uh, that is out of our control. So I think that we are in very much in control here of uh, the wean to first service interval. And uh, we can affect this by some specific management practices on the farm. Um, so two factors that really impact wean to first service interval in general um, would be the lactation length or the weaning age of those pigs. Um, so this is aside from the summer and the heat of the summer issues that we face, um, just short lactation periods under 16 days have led to longer intervals because the uterus doesn't have enough time to involute or recover uh, from her farrowing. So the longer the lactation length, the longer the sow has for her to recover her reproductive tract. Ideally today, uh, most industry uh, is around 20 to 24 days of age on their wean age. Um, So we can consider that for our wean to first service interval uh, and having an impact there. Uh, Second to that is the lactation intake of the sow. So I think that's primary here, what we're talking about in the summertime. Um, It impacts the sow's energy that she has available during lactation and uh, subsequent follicular development. So good intake results in a better conditioned sow. And summertime heat really impacts that sow's intake. So that's where I guess I will have some tips and tricks for the audience and what we can talk about here, Clayton. Um, So just start with ambient temperature. So when sows experience um, an increase in ambient temperatures in excess of 70 degrees, uh, they start to experience heat stress in general and reduces their feed intake. Ideal temperature for sows, 45 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit with the really optimal range being 60 to 65 for the sow. So achieving that is really important to keeping her comfortable and keeping her lactation intake high so we can keep a good short wean to first service interval. So I guess like most things with pigs, my tips and tricks are going to stem from basic husbandry and the three most important principles that we talk about uh, in most of our farm visits as veterinarians would be air, feed, and water. So talking about these three principles and extending that to the wean to first service interval is what I'll get into, I guess, of the tips and tricks that I can share with you today. So we'll talk about water first because it's the primary nutrient or the primary ingredient into the pig. It's the biggest factor to keeping her on feed. They require really good water access to maximize feed intake. Uh, in the summertime, sows will 
drink even more than they typically would other times of year. So in the summer, we see up to 16 gallons of water consumption, and that's up from five to 10 gallons that we'd see other times of year. So we need to make sure that we have good, fresh, clean water available, uh, constant rates, good flow rate. Uh, we should have a half a gallon per minute as our flow rate to make sure that we're giving uh, the south the optimal uh, water availability. Um, we know that sows will drink five times the amount of water that they will consume in the amount of feed. So it's actually a five to one ratio of water to feed that sows are consuming. So it's really critical that we have that good water availability. Um, we can extrapolate this not only into lactation, but also into our breeding row. So if you're using trough waters, for an example, uh, a good remedy for increasing your total born and uh, improving your wean to first service interval would be to install individual drinkers in the breeding row. We've done that in several of our farms where we've used trough waters and seen a great impact on the subsequent total born on our pigs and uh, decreasing the wean to first service interval when we've installed these individual drinkers. So that would just be a suggestion if your barns today are trough waters, especially on the breeding row, installing those individual drinkers will really help them out, improving their hydration, improving the follicular development and subsequent pigs born alive. Um, secondly, uh, we'll talk about feed. So that's probably the most important factor here for improving your wean to first service interval. Provide more calories per bite could be one suggestion. So in the summer months, uh, we would oftentimes look at our diet and uh, maybe make some changes there to increasing fat, like using more choice white grease or vegetable oils during the summer months uh, to improve the calor caloric intake uh, during reduced volume intake times. So if we can provide more bang for every bite that she consumes, uh, you're going to have an improved uh, wean to first service and over interval there because she's able to consume those amount of calories and less amount of feed consumed. Um, ensuring that ad lib feeding and lactation is achieved if possible. Um, if you're hand feeding today or if you don't have an automatic feed system, adding individual sow hoppers on top of the feeders is certainly an option if there's not an automatic feed system available. Um, additionally, if you're hand feeding and lactation, another uh, good tactic there to decrease your wean to first service interval would be to increase the frequency, especially during the summer months. So not just feeding once or twice a day, but increasing the amount of times that sow is fed has several different benefits here. You're not only getting into the farrowing house and getting her up and encouraging her to physically get up and eat, um, but you're also keep giving her smaller meals. So there has um, been some studies out there where switching from two large meals, three meals a day will actually improve your intake by 10 to 15 percent. So just getting in there and breaking up that feeding into another uh, feeding for the for the day, going from two to two to three day, times fed per day, uh, will actually really improve um, your intake and subsequent improve your wean to first service in our role. Um, providing small meals also improves like the freshness of the feed. We'll get out that old feed, um, provide her with feed that she's more, it's more appetizing to her. It's also going to reduce her body temperature. So when we give sows a large volume of feed to consume in the farrowing house, it actually elevates their body temperature as they're working to digest and break down that feed. So if we provide them with smaller meals, um, it'll decrease their sow's body temperature because they're not having to elevate it as much as they're uh, breaking down that larger volume. So feeding more frequently, ensuring there's ad lib feed available, and maybe adjusting your diets would be some suggestions. Um, additional to feeding, we can feed at cooler times of the day. So if you're breaking up those feedings into three feedings for the day, doing one early in the day, maybe middle of the morning, and then in the evening would be ideal. So during those cooler times where her body temperature is also going to be reduced. Uh, lastly, we'll talk about air or temperature, which is a really important factor for our pigs and improving our wean to first service interval. Really basic, right? Making sure that all of our ventilation systems are working appropriately. That's always essential. Cool cells, inlets, fans, misters. Is everything actually operational? Checking these as part of a pre-room uh, checklist or pre-fill checklist of your room uh, would be a great benefit. Cleaning exhaust fan blades, shutters, removing all that dust buildup. Even checking in your attic, I often think it's an overlooked part of the farm, but peeking in that attic and looking at your insulation, seeing if there's any damage from the winter months or maybe any moisture that's gotten into there affecting the insulation. Um, measuring airspeed's important, making sure we're actually ventilating appropriately. So 100 or 420 feet per minute would be a minimum expectation for our farrowing houses. Lastly, if you're working in a naturally ventilated farrowing house, you can add some drippers above the sows to help with evaporative cooling. This, this could be done pretty easily. You don't have to 
really add any major structure to your farm. You could put a tote on top of the crate, fill it with water, put a small hole in it, and let it drip slowly onto the sow's back, allowing the surface of her temperature to have water added and then the air moving over her to actually remove that heat from her body through evaporative cooling. So there are some little tips and tricks there, making sure everything's appropriately working, making sure we're optimized, and then as well as adding some drippers there to the farrowing house. So air, feed, and water are really critical. Very good, Lauren. Excellent overview. Tremendous. Do um, you have any specific parities that you look out for or maybe pay attention to more when it comes to managing wean to service interval and some of the summer heat challenges? Yeah, I can really appreciate that question. So we definitely look at our first parity sows, those sows that are coming in as gilts into the farrowing house and leaving as our first parities. Those would be really critical to look at. Those are going to be the ones that would probably lag the most on our wound to first service interval. And uh, here's going to be the veterinarian and me coming out and giving you uh, a veterinarian suggestion, depending on your vet and um, what they're comfortable with and what their suggestions may be. There is a hormonal strategy that we can use to manage those P1 sows in the summertime. It's often used as a crutch for less than optimal management strategies, but we can use PG600 at weaning, uh, administer that to the P1s and actually uh, kind of restart or kickstart their uh, hormonal cycles and their system um, to getting bred back faster and actually getting into estrus quicker. So administering PG600 to your P1 sows is a common practice. Like I said, it's a bit of a crouch. Uh, it's an expensive one at that and market times will dictate that, but we can certainly administer that to P1s to kind of kickstart their cycle and get them back to estrus as quick as possible. United Animal Health has been innovating nutrition that feeds the animals that feed the world since 1956. Now a multinational ag biosciences company, we help people impact the health of their animals with less labor, less variation, less drag, less challenge, and less natural resources. Learn more at unitedanh.com. Well, thanks uh, for being on the show and to our audience. Thank you very much to listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at our web website, swinehealthblackbelt.com, and subscribe to the podcast so that you catch not only Dr. Lauren's episode, but uh, all the ones going forward. For Dr. Lauren Glozinski, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks very much and have a great day. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H E L L O at W I S E N E T I X dot com. <laughs>